When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. That's what one 15-year-old entrepreneur decided when she started her lemonade stand at the age of four. Some 10 years later, uh, Michaela Almar now runs a multi-million dollar lemonade business. And today, she's releasing her new book on what it's like to be an entrepreneur at such a young age. Michaela Almar, me and the bees, lemonade CEO and author of Be Fearless, Dream Like a Kid joins us now. Michaela, uh, good to see you. I've been following your story for quite some time. What is it? What is it like running a business at the age of 15 during a pandemic? Um, I think it's a, like a lot of juggling. So I am working on school. We're doing remote schooling. Um, also publishing this book and making sure that the product is still selling, even though a lot of the restaurants and cafes that had previously carried the product are now closed down. So I mean, it's it's making sure we have a great team and keeping everything balanced. Well, you are very articulate and uh, seems like you got a good head on your shoulders uh, at the ripe old age of 15. What would you say to other, to your peers who, who are seeing what you're doing and saying, you know, I have an idea for a business. I want to do that too. What would your advice be to them? Um, well, one piece of my advice would be don't wait till you're older just because you don't think you can do it now. Because I think that even if you don't end up continuing this business or even if you go into a different path, if you have a cool business idea and you want to start it now and you have a target market that you want to meet, then do it now because you get to gain that experience and learn problem solving and like how to be resourceful. And we also have so many resources like technology and social media that can help us that we're pros at. Michaela, how do you how do you get the big meeting uh, with that with that executive? By all indications, your business is, is growing, uh, but executives um, such as yourself, uh, but executives in, in your case, retailers, they're just so darn busy. How do you get their attention? Hmm. Um, I think it's the power of storytelling because the executive, especially if they're looking to carry and sell more products, they want customer they want products that customers can recognize they can um, relate to and connect with and so for me me getting sung by bees and using my company as a platform to help save and increase um, awareness about them that's one thing that catches their eye so it's the power of storytelling and how you can use that for your brand and whatever product you're selling Michaela how did you get the seed money for this business so I actually started from $50. It was a $50 money order for my godfather and $25 loan from my parents because I didn't have enough to get the ingredients. But when we actually got into my first couple of stores in Austin, we realized that we needed funding. And so it was Shark Tank and we landed a deal with Mr. Damon John for an investment on Shark Tank. And then more recently, we were invested by um, the about 10 NFL players invested a little over 800,000 into me and the bees. And so we're able to use that funding to continue to scale and grow. Michaela, where, where, where's Michaela Omar in, in 10 years? Are you still running this business? Do you want to start another business? How do you think about your future? Uh, I have always wanted to become a serial entrepreneur. So I may like still be running this business. I would definitely like to increase the team so that it's less, like I would either like to start a new company, invest in other like minority run or female owned businesses because funding was definitely something that we had to work hard to get as we were growing. So I think investing is really cool. I'm going to be graduating from college. Um, still not sure what I'm going to study, but yeah, I, I definitely need some planning to do. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll be following your story. You know, walk us through a little bit on, on the funding. Uh, how difficult has it been to raise money? So I think because it depends. Some investors realize that like part of your, a huge part of your business is the fact that you donate. So some of them understand, okay, it's not all about the numbers. It's all about all of the buzz that your brand has created. It's like about the speaking engagements and also now the book and like your audience and your connection on social media. So some, some investors know that, but for those who don't and kind of only look at the numbers, it has been hard. And so we're realizing that if we focus on the investors who like really want to invest with purpose and invest in social businesses, we're a lot more successful. And being socially responsible is important to you, right? Cause you're giving a, some proceeds of, of each sale to an organization close to your heart. Tell us quickly about that, Michaela. Yes. Yeah, so I like to say that's what 
it's constantly recurring in Be Fearless is the importance of social entrepreneurship and having a business with a cause and a mission. And it's something that we hear a lot more nowadays because people are looking for products that they can get behind and they can see what they're doing in the world. And so for me, me and the bees is a lemonade company that's sweetened with honey, but it also donates a portion to organizations helping the bees. And so one of those organizations is a healthy hive which is a nonprofit that I started to help research and educate and preserve the bees. So like changing campuses and um, land into bee friendly areas too. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.